What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. You're watching Dave Beyond TV where we go beyond that everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, quick, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about transits today. But quick little, I, you know, just thing I was thinking about when you talk about what the meaning of blessed is, you know, we know that the context is being used today. It's like, you know, you know, being less, you know, oh, no, nah, I ain't going to be less. That's what we be saying. You know what I'm saying? Don't, oh, no, nah, I ain't going to be less. But when you really break down blessed and what it really means, is, it's really just saying, um, you know, when you receive an outcome that's greater than what you originally thought was a possibility. Because when we th think about God and we think about any heavenly being, right? Let's take the mysticism out of it. That's right. When we talk about heavenly, we thinking of a higher angle, a more positive or optimistic uh, angle or viewpoint. And, you know, we thinking of, you know, an angel. We think of oh, okay, that's that's a idea that's coming from a higher space, right? When we think of a demon, we think of a, a, a energy that's coming from a lower space. We think of oh, okay, that's demonic. It's animalistic. We really just saying it's coming from lower chakras, ones that vibrate slower and therefore are heavier in density. But when we talk about, you know, heaven, God, really, it's different. It's different between angels, heaven, and God. Because the angels, like I said before, is talking more about the, the angle. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about the vibration in which something is coming from. When we talk about heavens, we're talking about, you know, things that keep us light. Uh, things that deal with our heavenly bodies, which is more like what are you talking about? I, I, yeah, somebody see me out, but anyway, you know, when we talk about heavens, we're talking about things that's more correlated to, uh, like I said before, the angles is coming from the angels and then. When we talk about heavens, we're talking about more like, you know, could be things that are light, such as ideas, concepts and things above, quote unquote, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not really a high and low type thing, but it's, you know, things above and, and, and things that are uh, below, you know, things that are not heavenly are coming from those lower natures. So when we talk about heavenly bodies, we're talking about like kind of thought forms, you know, in a sense, um, because it's all interpretation. But, you know, some interpretations are more accurate than the other ones. You know, the more you, you know, because you never know, like, the way in which a lot of things are interpreted is where people kind of make the mis uh, miscorrelations. That's when people kind of don't really know what, you know, which one to follow. Or they, they look at a certain thing with a certain viewpoint and think it actually was that. They don't look at the Bible, for instance, as metaphor. They look it, at it as literal fact. And that's where it gets crossed because it's all up for interpretation it's it's a it's a lens to look at um the stories and allegories from that you know is the actual religion itself it's like the lens you check you you choose but when you're able to read the bible and have no bias and just look at it for what it is then boom you can get a very clear well i won't say clear but you can get a very direct as far as direct to your viewpoint and your according to your morality uh what the meaning of that allegory or story is. Um, but you have to know how to speak the language. And part of speaking the language is to understand what's being referred to. You know, these are things that are beyond man. These are light. You know, we're talking about light, ideas, thoughts, feelings. You know what I'm saying? We, we're talking about things like that. We're talking about uh, vibrations and, and, you know, whatever may have you. But this ain't about all that. But And then lastly, when we talk about God, we talk about, uh, all possibilities right so when you think of all possibilities we all have a glimpse of what all, all possibilities could look like based upon our own imagination creativity experiences and wisdom and knowledge you know what i'm saying we can piece together what our glimpse of all possibilities is but in the grand scheme of things you know this is why you know not to get confused with creating a god complex you are not all possibilities but through you all possibilities can be experienced or exp or or uh expressed i should say so therefore this is where you know we come down to you having 
a piece of God or you being a piece of God, you having God within you, your ability to create, you know, something that has not yet been perceived because it came from you and your one of a kind space. Right. But when we talk about God itself, this is all possibilities as a space. So, again, being blessed is being given something that you is greater than what you could have possibly imagine so it's something you couldn't have imagined you know you he's like yeah i believe all i believe all possibilities but i didn't think it could look like that or look like this and that's when you find yourself in some, a situation where you'd be like damn i'm truly blessed you'd be like i was given a, a, an experience or put in a space in which i didn't think was possible you know what i'm saying but i believed in all possibilities so i did my part in the matter it's like you get what you deserve so you did your part in the matter you put in energy to experience something that again wasn't uh condemned by whatever you were experiencing in the actual moment you were able to utilize your creativity and your god powers to to create a reality that was greater for you but that's that's what happens and when you actually experience that that comes through and it's clear and effective it's like it gets to a part where it gets to a point where it's like, oh, okay, cool. It gets to a part where it's like, damn, you can look around you and say, damn, I, I manifested a situation that's greater than what I thought could be possible. I'm blessed, you know what I'm saying? So that's the real meaning of blessed. You know, of course, we don't want to be less, but it's like, that's the real meaning. You know, that's the only, I'm not going to say it's the only meaning because it's like, but it, it low key is because it's like when you're, when you're blessed, it should be. You know what I'm saying? The way they confused it in people's minds, it looked like being less. Because, see, the reason why it's negative in the way that religious context is, is because they're saying, I was blessed with this. Meaning they look at it more like um, humanistic. Meaning they look at it like their God is a human giving them things. You know what I'm saying? Like as if, you know, oh, yeah, I was blessed with this house and car. Thank you, God, for giving me that. And it's like. God didn't give you that. God didn't even care about you on that personal human type level. You know what I'm saying? People are stuck in that human type view of, of, of again, uh, you talking about God. You're not talking about man. You know, God doesn't have any feelings or thoughts towards your decisions or motives or move. Like God only sees what your motive is. And it's still, again, it's judgment, but it's not judgment from a place of, you know, again, when people think of judgment as, you know, on a human level, right? We talk about the three experiences, human, spiritual, and world, you know, uh, physical, you know, physical being things we have to do in the system, like our job to maintain life on this plane. Then there's um, human, which is getting caught up in thoughts and feelings and personal perceptions. And then there's spiritual, where we have to detach from that and see things from all possibility angles and create our own one of a kind expression, you know, that we put in, like through that spirit, we we express ourselves in our, in our, in our body. Like, I don't wanna get too, I, I feel like I'm, with this video, I'm already like, you know, either you in the space to, to kind of hear what I'm saying and understand or not. But, you know, when it comes to because honestly, I'm not even talking negatively about your religion. If that's what you choose to believe in, that's on you. But, you know, what, what happens is a lot of times, again, like, the issue lies within the interpretation. And when you interpret things with a lens, you get caught in the worldview. You get caught in a specific way to see this vast universe for lack of better words this vast experience you know what i'm saying you limit your expansion and it's very difficult to consider yourself a spiritual person if you are again uh compelled to or well, not compelled but condemned to one of these views and ways of seeing the world because there's there's many different ways to see the world so don't miss out on again all possibilities that's the only way you're going to get closer to god it's the only way you're going to really expand you know what i'm saying so you got to be mindful of that and take that into consideration when you are participating in you know different things with your with your spirit but for the most part getting back to what i was saying so when it comes to um I'm trying to I'm trying to remember exactly where it was it was like um what was i saying it was something to do with you know we were talking about uh you know viewpoints uh, ways of seeing the world, uh, choosing lenses. 
yeah, it's like it's like when you you know ain't nothing really wrong because there's nothing wrong or right type shit. But it's just like you're choosing to play a game that you don't really need to play. You're choosing to put yourself at at a somewhat of a disadvantage because you're not seeing things from the clearest point of view, you know. But hey, sometimes there's things for us to learn within you know these lenses you know sometimes you had to spend a couple years dabbling into that religion to understand what that what that whatever that you know because there's wisdom and knowledge and stuff you know what i'm saying through these texts and things of that nature um i like to think that you know in a lot of ways you know how they say you have to lose yourself to find yourself sometimes we have to immerse ourselves in something that we're experiencing for us to know the ins and outs of it, you know, and that's really with anything in life, you know, uh, we can't live life scared and we can't live life half assed meaning, you know, you can't tiptoe around what it is you really want to do. If, if that's something that you are experiencing to learn the most you can out of it, sometimes you have to immerse yourself. But at the same time, when it comes to things, like, again, that's good for things when you understand though, that you are not whatever you're immersing yourself in. You still have to remember that, that, that little reminder just to create enough detachment from whatever you're immersing yourself in because you don't want to spend too much time being lost because it's like you know again you have to lose yourself to find yourself so when you get involved in certain things you again you have to you have to fully be in that circumstance in order for you to really get that experience but you know again it's the same thing as learning a little bit from others before you know it's like you don't you you didn't have to go through that all the time. You don't have to go through that all the time. Some other people might have gone through enough to show you exactly what you about to get into, you know. But at the same time, it's like it's just it's all depends on you and what's worth getting lost in, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's a different conversation than the one we have. And really, I just wanted to come in real quick and talk about bless because that's was just on my mind. But um, because you know that's really what it is. You know, you've been gifted. Uh, an experience or something that is greater than what you thought, you know, because we spend all day creating these elaborate imaginations of how we want things to be. But truly, we, you know, we, we receive or we manifest for ourselves, you know, scenarios sometimes that's way better. Oh, that's kind of what I was getting at. My, I, I remember now when you look at things from a religious context, you get caught up in that human transaction um, that happens and a, a lot of it is not really real and what I mean by that is like you know the fake human uh, interactions that that occur like for instance when you walk into a building and it's like somebody be like you know will smile at you and it's like the polite thing to do to say you know hey how are you good morning you know but say you're a person who just don't do that you know, it's like this, it's this weird game people play where some people are hooked on the validation that that small talk and that conversation gives them. So the interaction becomes less about genuinely asking an individual how they are and greeting them like good morning and actually engaging with them. It becomes way more about a a robotic response to receive a certain validation that they again I now crave like you know hey good morning like pe some people want to be you know saying like some people take offense if you don't say good morning to them you know what i'm saying and again this ain't like to be rude and we getting into like little we getting into the crevices of shit right now like so it's like not really a situation where um you know because it happens on bigger scales you know just like again think about relationships and how much you might subconsciously do things to receive forms of validation or affection because uh, again we all come from families who and parents who may not have known the best practices to deal with us and may not even have known the best practices for their own lives and you know what i'm saying they might have again they hurt us because we all feel that pain you know as growing up like we we all have different childhoods some people is way more extreme other people are are way less uh intense 
But, you know, we all go through enough experience in our life because if it didn't happen in the home, it happened outside the home where we just again, we, we find ourselves in these emotional loops with these emotional scars, you know, what I'm saying these insecurities that we picked up based upon not getting validation in certain areas and wanting it in other areas, because we all in some way. You know, we all have things that we are validated on, but we also have a bunch of things that people that go highly unnoticed that we care about, that we value. That's why it's important to really connect with people based upon values. That's really what things need to be connected on. What do both of us value? And from there, whatever we build can be in sync in some degree, because we know, again, relationship wise, you know what I'm saying? chances are what we're going to want to build or build on is going to have something to do with those values that's just how it goes usually your values are kind of one of those underlying driving forces for a lot of things um it's even better if you can connect your intentions and your mission with your values you know that i mean it should naturally happen but Again, the more aware you are of certain things, the better, you know, so if you can really connect your values with what you're conscious, you know, what you're actually on a mission to do, those be the people who see success. Those be the people who find ways out of their situation um, and become blessed, you know, because God, again, God is not this human who is driven by emotion and uh, validation and, and all these different things on the surface that humans are driven by. Humans do anything for somebody to acknowledge them in the way that they want to be acknowledged. You know, a lot of us, depending on how damaged you are, you know, the more wise you become and the stronger you come in, become in yourself. And when you really become a real spirit and you detach from a lot of that bullshit, you start to find yourself in spaces in which, again, you don't need none of that, but you can't get enough. Like, it's almost like you, you can't get away from people praising you. You can't get away from people giving you this, giving you that. And it's like, but again, those who seek that are the ones who don't get it. And we see the illness that it creates. But see, when it comes to these religions, a lot of these religions utilize that natural human response because it comes from being, again, stuck in your human side, your desires, stuck in your human experience. You stuck on what you want. You stuck on what you think you need. You stuck on survival mode. You think if you don't get this emotional connection, you can't survive. That's how a lot of individuals think. If I can't have this relationship how I want it, I'm gonna die. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some people be like, and you know, it's, it's 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 funny, but it's not funny because it's like, you know, when you've been again, you you grew up in a certain way, and you took on certain emotional abuse. You know, people who aren't able to, you know, heal that and deal with that shadow or even notice that shadow those be again those become driving forces like you wonder why the, the world is the way it is a lot of it is the way it is because of that human experience getting locked into that you again like i said survival mode a lot of low vibrational activity you know like i was saying with angels and demons this is where demons come out because demons become it's like those desires those those lower natures that again aren't necessarily bad because again we here having this physical and human experience so it's okay to feel pleasure it's cool to feel pleasure you know what i'm saying it's here for a reason it's cool to feel good things you know what i'm saying it's cool to experience things at night you know what i'm saying i'm using that as a metaphor to talk about things behind closed doors that we do it's cool to you know what i'm saying experience those things ain't nothing wrong with it the problem becomes when you know, there's an imbalance and there's this unhealthy obsession and un inability to detach from that for a moment to to gain a grip on what, again, what's right. And what's right, what I mean is like coming from, you know, those higher chakras every now and then coming from your, those higher angles coming from your spirit, where it's like, you know, what happened to the body that wasn't attached to the feeling of how did, how good this felt or how. Uh, angry this made you how this made you feel you know when you too lost in all these feelings and you let these feelings cause these feelings what they do is they cloud your judgment they they dirty up your your water every now and then you got to clean that that's when you again talking to god that's when you in a spiritual space where you're detaching from all these emotions and thoughts because again what do we always say these things are not you now when you come for, for, come at things with a religious context for everything right when you when you're really stuck in that kind of viewpoint 
what ends up happening is a lot of religions play into desires it's okay to do whatever you need to do because you can ask for forgiveness and it takes the accountability away from you and puts it on some other being and you can go so far as to blame this being for why you're not successful or spend your time instead of actually putting in the work to get where you want to get you can ask this being for nice things and pretend like you are actually being what you want to experience you can pretend you can play pretend you can say hey can you you know big 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 daddy in the sky, can you please get me a million dollars? And it'd be, again, you, you're not even asking for nothing real. Maybe you are, right? Maybe you are praying for something real. But a lot of y'all praying for things that is going to only satisfy or only pertain to the physical world. Think about that. You're talking to God about human affairs. That's not going to work. So what you really are doing are you're, you're, selling, you're selling your soul. You're giving your energy to another being's worldview. So they're draining you in ways that, again, they're block. They're they're saying you're they're basically blocking you from all possibilities. They said only our possibilities are possible. So they gave you a religion. They gave you a viewpoint, a section, a piece of God, and you think that piece is God. So you give all your energy to that piece, and whole time that piece is really just another group of beings who created a pretty much a, a Wizard of Oz. If you ever seen that movie at the very end, hate to spoil it for you, but, you know, at the very end, you find out Oz ain't this magical being. It's this dude behind a projector. And that's what y'all, again, praying to y'all. But y'all reading the text, not understanding, you know, this is if this is a, you know, whatever religious text it is, the, the spells and the real shit is in there. But God ain't necessarily in there. It's, it might be like ideas and concepts of how to get there. But, you know, the viewpoint in which you're choosing to interpret the information is not God. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the viewpoint you choose and the, look, the lens you choose and to look from is the reason why is the reason why you, it's that disconnect. You know what I'm saying? It's the reason. You know, when you really connect it, when you, and, 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 you know, because that, that's the thing. You know, I understand how it is, you know, when you because you know leaving a religion you just like you, your first instinct is to jump and cling to something else so it's hard to have something else in between that's why I like you know astrology is cool because it gives you something to understand that space while you're formulating your own relationship with God you know it allows you the insight to work on yourself and develop your awareness on different planes you know on different different spectrums you know you can develop your awareness and as you develop your awareness of your space you start to develop your own relationship with god it's like it's it's, it's something that it's almost it goes hand in hand that's why astrology be cool for you know it'd be cool when you really get the real astrology when you're not caught in because it all comes down to like i said before interpretations even people who you know you might watch certain astrologers right and you can tell they, they, they might not be talking to God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might not be, I don't want to keep saying talking to God, but they might not be reading from a genuine space. You can tell when everything is something correlated to something in the physical. It's like, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, those posts that be like uh, Aries, Libra, Cancer, um, Capricorn, this month you're gonna manifest hella abundance. You're gonna see all your dreams come true, and you know you're gonna get everything you ever wanted. And that person that you've been chasing is gonna fall right into your lap. Like that. What, like what the fuck is that? Like what that mean? You know, chances are they might have looked at one planet, like Jupiter's aspect. Like you know, like people be so basic with certain shit. It's like nah, when you get into the meat and potatoes of, of some real astrology, and you you start to understand and look at it from a real critical view, and 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 not just a, you know, like am I gonna get you know mirror mirror on the wall? Am I gonna get everything I asked for and all this magic genie bullshit? Like that's the first thing people want to do is like oh you know how I'm gonna get rich with being an airy sun like what makes me special it's like these are these, again when astrology you look at it from the right lens when you understand okay me as an aries this is just how i express myself it has nothing to do with what i'm going to manifest 
that's on me like you know what i'm saying that's the real lesson of astrology it's a tool understand the elements and what it is and then you look at your like because again on a, it's like i'm gonna tell you straight up you're not gonna find what makes you special you're not gonna find what makes you a superhero in no interpretation in no reading in no nothing that's got to come from you you know if you don't choose to get up off your ass and be somebody don't matter what alignment you got because there's no alignment in the world that can guarantee that you as a spirit is going to get up off your ass and be somebody and be something you know what i'm saying and you know what i'm saying because <laughs> it's just not you know there's no alignment in the world there's no religion in the world there's no entity but to hammer in the point like looking at things from a religious view you create this human transaction with energy where you think oh yeah i was blessed you looking at it like yeah god gave me that no you got up and chose to make something of yourself god just showed you a way towards a greater possibility than you could have ever perceived and that's why you're blessed because you manifested a situation hey this is greater than i would have ever thought because that's the thing we all start with a vision we all start with an imagination but one thing I used to always realize, because I used to want to draw, right? I used to want to do, uh, I, w I wanted to make video games. So I would, you know, it, I, I wanted to get into digital art. And, you know, before I got to, di you know, this is like, you know, they, I, the iPads wasn't crazy yet. So I had to learn how to draw, draw, for real. <laughs> so I was like, you know, with drawing, I'd be like, you know, I used to draw these dragons. And I'd be like, man, like. At a certain point, I was happy with, you know, a lot of my drawings, but it was like, man, I can't get this drawn. Like, when I came to drawing other stuff, like, draw real life stuff and all this, even things from my mind, because I was like, I, I started making, like, these little comic books, and I was like, I would draw things, and I'd be like, damn, I'd get frustrated. So I was real young, and I'd be like, damn, I can't get it to look how I imagined it. And I realized, like, and in, in, again, in life, you know, you can imagine, I, I, I'd be like, man, like, life, when I make plans, like, I remember I was shooting a film, like, for my um, senior project in college, uh, we had, we, I, I got the opportunity to um, shoot a film, a, a, a short film, but it was really a pilot, and, you know, it was like 22-minute screenplay, and I was the director of it, and it was like, you know, I was like, okay, I had an idea in my mind that idea changed so many times by the finished product. You know, very happy and satisfied with the finished product, but that's one thing that always stuck to me. I was like, why does it, why does it seem like every time you got something in your mind and imagination, you just can't create it exactly to be that? And I realized, shit, it's not supposed to look like that. It's not supposed to be exactly that. Because if you let it flow, see, if you let that frustrate you, which I did at first, you get discouraged and you stop. You know what I'm saying? You stop. You choose to do something else. When you trust it and let go and flow with it, allow God to bless you, in a sense, it's like, damn, you end up with something way better than you would have ever imagined. And this is not to say everything you do is going to come out perfect like that. Come out like how you want it. Or I don't say how you want it, but it doesn't mean everything going to come out like a masterpiece or something you're proud of after the fact. But it's just to say, even when you're talking about being like, like living life, going through experiences, but also being an artist, being being yourself is like, you know, it's not going to look how you imagined it. But do your best to imagine what it could possibly be, but allow all possibilities to be there. And as you allow all possibilities, chances there's a greater chance that you just might be blessed, aka given something, given something. Like I'm not even gonna say where it came from. It ain't come from God. It coming from the universe. Given something greater than what you could have ever imagined to be. And leave it at that, you know what I'm saying? And it's not about being less. It's just about receiving something greater because, like I said, there's, there's a cap, there's limitations. Us in this human body, having this human experience, our spirits are limitless. 
So again, who's to say you didn't give it to yourself? You done manifested a situation that's greater than what you could have imagined because you believed in all possibilities. You accessed your God space and opened a whole library towards something. You know what I'm saying? Something great. So, yeah, that's just the word for today. I was just, again, like I was just thinking about the concept of blessed. And I thought I was going to, you know, make a little quick insert and jump to the transits. I, I guess I'm just going to make a separate video for the moon and uh, Virgo. But um, I guess it kind of relates to Virgo energy, too, because, you know, how they say the devil is in the details. It's like criticizing, your, you know, criticizing that shit too much. You take the you take the blessing out of it. The devil being in the details, you you oppose something that could have been a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that the Pisces energy is always going to bless you in a positive way. Sometimes you get blessed with a negative way. You know what I'm saying? That's when you actually being less. When you, you know, when you receive something and you didn't, you know, you didn't receive the full maximum experience of it. You got a little tiny piece. You was blessed. You got, you was being less. <laughs> Anyway, anyway let, let me let me stop playing, man. I'm just playing with words. But for real, you know what I'm saying? Just some real shit for you to consider. And um, you know, if you are an individual who is, you know, finding yourself and, you know, again, ain't nothing wrong with a religion, but just understand what it is. It's a it's a worldview, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it it's strategic to learn about different ways of going about the world you know just remain expansive you know what i'm saying and learn from other people you know as long as you because that's all we want to do man that's the whole point of this subconscious community shit it's like we're trying to make the world a better place we we are changing the world we're not trying we are changing the world by just helping people see themselves and see what they experience in it and, and stuck in maybe lost in see what See, you know giving new viewpoints to people because that's the whole problem it's just people are under these viewpoints and are and and from these viewpoints they develop survival mode ways of dealing with them that lead to harm you know what i'm saying debates that lead to you trying to destroy another person or you being so frustrated that you can't be great you so frustrated with what somebody else believe and it's like we don't need to be starting no wars or having no negative debates about a worldview, especially a worldview that ain't even your own. But if you are, do something positive with it. You know what I'm saying? See how other individuals' points of views have good points in them too and apply your good points and maybe, just maybe, you could be part of the individuals making the world a better place instead of being opposing and thinking that yours is right. And that everybody around you is wrong in a demon when you are the only one exhibiting demon characteristics. So this is really just again, we 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 don't give a fuck about what you believe in. We just need you to believe in or be yourself and eventually, hopefully believe in yourself enough to try to make the world a better place. That's what we use. Try try a different angle and trying to heal the world, too, because we know you hurt. That's the only reason you might you probably cling to a religion. You was hurt somewhere and you needed somebody, something, some something to lean on. We get it. But in some some sooner or later, you're going to have to find yourself and learn how to lean on yourself for once. And once you do that, you know, you on your you on your way, you on your way. And you the journey begins and then you start addressing that shadow. And again, start contributing to the real God's work, which is putting different vibrations out into the world, expanding. I'm not going to say all love, but seriously, putting love back into the world. Because love might not be everything, but it's what the world needs for real. More love, more understanding, more connection, more growth. You know what I'm saying? Like, we on earth. We supposed to grow. Can't grow without no real love and no real connection. You know what I'm saying? No real sense and willingness to actually, you know, pour into this experience. You know. But anyway, much love. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.